took me a long time to, to change. Um, obviously, I went through a stage where, where, where I was fighting, uh, fighting the religion um, because, for, as I said before, for 40 odd years, I didn't have a religion. Um, well, I suppose atheism in itself is a religion, um, or it's a belief of some sort. But it was such a strong belief in me that to suddenly have this feelings of wanting to be a religious person, especially an Islamic religious person, it was a fight. It was a fight. What I'm, you know? Suddenly, I can't. I can't drink, um, and I used to eat bacon and pork. Um, and to be told that you can't eat what you want to eat, my sort of whole psychological upbringing was, well, how dare you tell me what I can and can't eat? So it was an internal fight, a jihad, if you like. Um, it was basically, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't hard either in the end. Um, the drinking side, I mean, I used to drink an awful lot. Um, and the drinking side, all it was doing was bringing me down. Um, and when I stopped drinking, you suddenly realise what it was doing to you. But I don't think, if it hadn't have been for Islam, I would have carried on drinking until it sort of put me into an early grave. So that side of it um, was good. Um, but yes, it was an extremely hard transformation. It was, um, you know, I never went to church very often. And when I did, I couldn't wait to get out of the door. It was, what's the time? I've got so I know, I'd rather go and watch a soccer match and sit here listening to this boring person going on and on and on. So all of a sudden, being a Muslim and praying five times a day and coming to the mosque as, as often as I can. So I went from nothing to everything in one fell, fell moves. When I took the Shahada, the, the original... Um, it was on the 7th of October 2008, so it was not that long ago, and it was in Hastings Mosque. Um, it was quite frightening because, I mean, the Shahada, you have to repeat everything in Arabic. Well, I haven't got a clue, and I still haven't, I still struggle with the Arabic language. Um, so when the Imam sat on the floor and was telling me what to say, and I was repeating everything he said, and I was repeating everything wrong, but... Um, you know, no one said anything, and everyone was very supportive. Um, even though, I, I mean, I knew I was saying it wrong. Um, it's a very hard language to understand, um, and it's a very hard language for someone who speaks English to get their tongue around the actual accent and, and stuff like that. Um, but everyone in the mosque was very supportive and has been ever since. Um, however, my family are a different story. When, when I originally told my mum that I'd met a Muslim woman. <coughs> Her first reaction was dead silence. So I originally thought, well, maybe the phone's gone dead, and I'm saying, hello, are you there? Yes, I'm here. What's the problem? Why do you have to go out of a Muslim? She's a terrorist. And I've come across that since as well, um, with other people, not just family. Um, and then when I told my mum that I was actually going to convert to Islam, and that was probably a year ago. I had already done the conversion, and she hasn't spoken to me since. Um, and my sister's the same. She's sort of not very talkative. She wants to know, again, why I want to be a terrorist. Um, and this is the problem in the Western world, and especially in the UK, which is where my family are from, there's this belief that all Muslims are terrorists. Um, and no matter what you say to them, and you tell them that you know Islam is, is a, a religion of peace and love, um, they, they see what's on the press, they see what's in the newspapers, they see what's on the television. And what's on the television is news, and that's why it's there. And, and what makes news is the terrorist side. What doesn't make news is the peace side. Um, when you tell them that, that Christianity is also a, a violent religion, you know, you go back to the 70s in Ireland, and you've got the IRA in the guise of uh, England versus Ireland, and it's actually... Christians versus Protestants, but people forget that. People forget the Christian and Roman times, I mean, because that was thousands of years ago. Um, and when you tell them that, they don't want to know. They just want to know what's going on now. So it was it's very hard. But then, I live in New Zealand, which is hard anyway. It's 18,000 kilometres away from my family. Um, so in a way, it's good because I don't have to face them every day.
if it, Islam to to a non-Islamic person um, can offer, I, I think, can offer offer this whole world peace. Um, yes, you've still got your fundamentalists, and you're always going to have in any in any walk of life. You're going to have your fundamentalists. You're going to have your people that want to create terror. Um, but the majority of Islamic people are peaceful, peace-loving people, and I think that that can be sort of shown. That can be taught to other people. Um, how a whole group of people. Like when I when I look at Christianity, Christianity is is a Western religion. Um, Judaism is a Western religion almost. But when you look at Islam, and when you look at you go into any mosque here in New Zealand, and it's full of different races, it's full of different cultures, um, and everyone gets on with each other. When you go into a church, if there's six people in there, it's busy, but they're all sitting in their little corners and they're all sort of talking to each other. And yes, that does go on in Islam, but people still get on. Um, and if you go through hard times, if you, if you're struggling to make a living, if you're struggling to make ends meet. <coughs> People help you out. Well, I've never known that in any other race, in, in any other culture, in any other religion. People want to come and help.